Hello and welcome to another edition of Beyond the Real, a show where we go beyond the real. In this case, we will be tackling Loki's third episode. So, we're here to tackle Loki's third episode, which was okay. You know, um, there's a lot of action in it, surprisingly, and I, I don't know, it just felt a lot different from the past episodes because it doesn't really feel like this had as much, to me personally, I don't feel like it had the same substance that the past episodes have had so far and I'm really just curious as to what real purpose this is going to serve. So in this episode we get the fallout of what happened in the last episode with Loki uh, following the variant Loki into the time door and we find out that that actually leads to the TVA and variant Loki was pretty much just mowing down everybody but you know she's surprised to see that her powers don't work there which kind of makes me believe that she hasn't been there before so so I'm guessing her plan wasn't uh, wasn't as far as long as she wanted it to be but yeah she gets there she just quickly runs through like all these guards which okay but come on like we want to see I hate when I kind of hate it when stuff like that happens because I don't know like it just makes the Minutemen seem useless so I mean we haven't really seen them do anything so I don't like the fact that once again you know they're just pushed aside like they serve some kind of purpose right so can we see them serve said purpose instead of just being throwaway characters anyway moving along now um lady loki uh we also learn uh likes to go by the name of sylvie and she stops before she makes it to the timekeepers which at this point i'm starting to think that what if they're literal timekeepers, like a device and not these beings? But anyways, she stopped right before she can make it to the elevator with Loki once again offering uh, some kind of truce uh, slash help. And he's just trying to figure out what her deal is, but of course, you know, they get transported to... I forget what the place is called. Once they're there, that little device that... Once they're there, that device that they use, uh, we learn is called a time pad. And, oh, what do you know? it's out of juice so now they have to team up and i mean i expected a lot more from this team up that happens throughout the episode um i don't know i just have a lot of questions about it because we learn because they're together and i feel like loki is trying to get to know sylvie a little more but sylvie is kind of being very vague you know as you can imagine because they don't trust each other but I don't know I, I figured we Loki would have with his ability to pry uh, as we've seen in other films like uh, like what he did with Valkyrie for example like he's able to extract them bits and pieces of information from someone and I was expecting for us to see that uh, not necessarily in the same way but through conversation and of course we end up learning that Sylvie is um, of course a from a different timeline uh she doesn't have a mother much like loki had with frigga and i don't know i feel like this makes me like frigga a little more because i mean if you see her in thor the dark world whenever she gave her life for jane foster uh in endgame wherever you know she gives thor that little extra kick he needs uh whenever they go back to that time and just hearing uh, the relationship with Loki about how that's where he learned his magic from and as well as like her always being the driving force to uh, make him believe that he could do anything, you know, just, I thought that was really nice. And we learned that uh, Sylvie didn't have that. So there's a lot of differences between them, you know, as you could imagine. But that kind of makes me wonder like, because they kind of make it seem like if they have like their paths are supposed to be very similar yet different but i don't know i i kind of 
that's what I got instead of them being like, instead of them being similar, I got the thing where it's like, not really that similar. I feel like I just jumbled those words up, but th that's what I got from it. And also, we kind of learned a little more about Sylvie's powers, um, about in the enchantment, enchantments that she could do, and how she has to, you know, have this bond slash connection with the host. But, you know, she hasn't done it to Loki because, like, the, the episode opens with uh, her doing that enchantment. And I feel like she probably won't be able to do it to Loki because Loki, since they're both kind of the same or similar person, like, their power levels are about the same, so I figure maybe she won't be able to do it to Loki. Uh, but I don't know. And it kind of makes me wonder, like, I kind of get the impression that Loki's going to learn this at some point because he was asking about it and Sylvie said that she just learned it on her own so it makes me wonder if uh, Loki's going to be able to do that, just learn it on his own. Because I kind of got the feeling at some point in this episode that he was going to uh, do it to someone but that didn't happen. But anyways, um, while they're doing that, while they're, uh, while they're on this planet that kind of, it's kind of like if you get the uh, aesthetic from Thor Ragnarok and Guardians of the Galaxy and like put them together, that's literally what this is. And to a certain extent, I guess you could even say Bo the Borderlands franchise. That's kind of what this reminded me of. So I'll give them some points for that, of uh, the creativity in creating this planet. However, I did not like how this, the way uh, this looked uh, with the actual characters, actors. Because there are times where it just looked weird. Like you can tell that it was just, of course, like on a green screen or something. Or if it's, or if it wasn't, that's how it looked. And I don't know, it kind of took me out of it, but it was still nice to see. So of course uh, they team up, and then they do all kinds of stuff. And so of course they team up, they get on the train and they're on this train. And one thing that struck me about this train scene was the fact that uh, they're having the convers they're having this conversation there, and Loki mentions that he would never fall asleep around someone who he doesn't trust. So Sylvie falls asleep, and then she wakes up and she's she sees Loki's getting kind of wasted. So that makes me wonder, like, what if this whole thing is just him or her messing with him? But what that's just a thought. But anyways. So of course they get discovered and then they have to fight off more guards, yay. But uh, Loki gets thrown out of a window and I was like, okay, um, he, that seems to happen a lot, given in the last episode where he was being manhandled, but I don't know, they, they do, he gets manhandled again, he gets thrown out the window. But you get a nice little action scene and we get a call back to the first Thor film whenever uh, they're in the diner drinking coffee and he the Thor smashes it and he's like I like this drink another you know Loki does that in this one so I get this nice little callback and then uh, in the process of that happening Loki's time pad gets destroyed so they have to go to this thing called the Ark because the doomsday is gonna happen so they think that they can get on it to save the people of the planet so that way that will change the timeline, which I guess uh, obstructing the timeline would have the TVA appear to try to fix it. But given the TVA is being attacked, <laughs> I don't know how that's going to work. I'm guessing that was what they were going for, but I'm not sure. So they get there and we get a nice uh, another action scene, which I thought was really cool because it's almost like a continuous one shot, but just like the camera movement about how it goes from standing behind them to it going like throughout as it rotates like throughout the room to give you a different perspective and you're following the whole fight scene as they run and loki does this weird thing where he like he does telekinesis which to my knowledge at least i don't remember seeing him do that so that was kind of weird and also another thing loki genuinely seemed um he genuinely seemed like if he was concerned for the well the safety and well-being of these people so i kind of wonder like since Loki from 2012, I mean, this is Loki from 2012 who is still like very 
different from the Loki that you know we get to see progress throughout the film throughout the films in the MCU it makes me wonder if him seeing his life like kind of made him develop some sort of a conscience uh, from the first episode so I don't know that's just uh, something I picked up on I guess but yeah that's what happens and that's the episode and I don't know I feel like because in the end they, fa they they still end up failing so they're still stuck there and the art gets destroyed so it makes me wonder overall how is this gonna help continue the story because it, I don't know it doesn't I don't feel like it added too much to it oh and then we also learn um, that everyone in the TVA is a variant of something so I don't know I feel like I kind of saw that coming but I need some more info on that because I mean like in the last episode where we see uh, Mobius where he's uh, talking about the magazine I don't know I feel like that was a, a good enough hint and also on the TVA uh, Sylvie talks about how she has a some someone she's interested in who is a mailman I think it'd be funny if it's actually a homeboy from from a from the TVA the male dude I think that'd be hilarious but yeah that's uh, just a lot of just I don't want to I don't want to say random stuff but, but a lot of the stuff that was revealed in this episode doesn't does it really feel like it's as important as I think it is because it seems like they try to make it sound important in the episode but I don't get the feeling that it actually is that important all the information that we picked up on so I feel like I don't know this is just the two characters hanging out essentially going on like a side quest that's kind of what it feels like so I don't know I just hope that we get more of Mobius and the TVA in the next few episodes because I don't know I like them a lot and I feel like they have been the more interesting part of this whole series and so far with Sylvie I don't feel like she's as interesting yet I don't feel she's as interesting yet compared to Mobius in the TV. I feel like that's more of a mystery than what Sylvie is doing. So, I mean, while this was a lot of good action, like, I don't know, it, it just didn't really do it for me. But I'm excited to see where the story goes. And I'm also curious to hear what you think. Um, I know, you know, you guys don't really leave many comments, but, you know, if you could leave a comment, if you would like to, I'd be interested to hear what you think. And, I don't know, next week we can continue to talk about it uh, based on what happens in next week's episode. But, yep, that's uh, my time for now. My name is Alex. This is Beyond the Real. Thanks for hanging out. And we'll see what happens on next week's Loki time. All right. Bye.